part in this significant occasion. In particular, I greet the ex-governor of Cross River State of Nigeria, His Excellency Donald Duke. I also greet the immediate past president of the Republic of Congo, His Excellency Dr. Joseph Kabila, and the moderator of today's occasion, Dr. Francis Okezie, Chief Operating Officer, Director Smart Med Services Group Canada. His Excellency Abdusalam Paxman, Director Interreligious Affairs, U Polag, Ambassador Olugun Oluashen Williams, Chairman ECOWAS West Africa Youth Council, His Divine Grace Swan Smaranandaji, Guru and President Ramakrishna Matt Worldwide, Professor Kalistus Ndua, Professor of Systematic Theology, DG International Council for Peace and Justice, England, Dr. Moses Ayukata, Founder, Christ Restoration Center, Tulsa, USA, Dr. James Simon, Special Advisor to the President of Guinea, Dr. Lawson Mbugus from Kenya, whose presentation is professional contributions towards infrastructural development in Lagos State. And Christ Ambassador Tare Okorotie, Christ Ambassador Julius Yanayo, Sister Blessing Nimbofa John, and I greet also the resource persons comprising of Patrice Christ Shepherd Oga Usim, whose topic of discussion is Leader Olumba Olumbo Bu, Teachings and Philosophy on Global Unity and Peace. His Grace Archbishop Innocent Omini, whose topic hinges on the practical works of Leader Olumba Olumba Obu to Global Unity and Peace. To the participating audience and all those who are following the magnificent lecture I once again welcome all of you. The third edition of Leda Olumba Olumbo Bo Lecture with the team Unity in Diversity as Key for the Peace and Sustainable Development offers me a befitting occasion to express once again the brotherhood of the cross and stars desire that this and subsequent lectures increasingly serve as a sign of unity and an instrument of service to the entire human family in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In these days, our world continues to be impacted by many factors, principal among which is the COVID-19 pandemic, which has led to the loss of so many lives. This crisis is changing our way of life, calling into question our economic, health, and social systems, and exposing our human fragility. The pandemic indeed calls us to seize this time of trial as a time to choose what matters and what passes away, a time to separate what is necessary from what is not. It can represent a concrete opportunity for conversion, for transformation, for rethinking of our way of life and our economic and social systems, which are widening the gap between rich and poor, based on an unjust distribution of resources. On the other hand, the pandemic can be the occasion for a defensive retreat into greater individualism and elitism with a choice between two possible paths. One path leads to the consolidation of multilateralism as the expression of a renewed sense of global co-responsibility, a solidarity grounded in justice and the attainment of peace and unity within the human family which is God's plan 
for our world in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The other path emphasizes self-sufficiency, nationalism, protectionism, individualism, and isolation. It excludes the poor, the vulnerable, and those dwelling on the peripheries of life. That path would certainly be detrimental to the whole community, causing self-inflicted wounds on everyone. It must not prevail. Your presentation today has highlighted the urgent need to promote unity and diversity, which of course is the key for peace and sustainable development. A solution is for people to work closely with Brotherhood of the Cross and Star to promote and entrench unity amongst religious religions and the tribes in Nigeria and the whole world as advocated by leader Olumba Olumbobu, founder of the BCS. BCS believes that, yes, humanity not only can unite, but will unite as one human race. That essential oneness, the teachings tell us, is our birthright and our destiny. This lecture's event slogan is, to make the whole world one, a task that must be done. And the theme song is, We Are One. In the Lord, there should be no more division. This is always the teaching of leader Olumba, Olumba Obu, whose sole aim is to unite humanity and all religious ideologies as well as reform and free man from vices. Mankind is suffering much because of deep-seated hatred for the people, division, and lack of respect for the divergent peoples, cultures, religions of the world in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I caution against religious intolerance and violence. People of goodwill must come together. All nations must eschew division. And the political leadership, too, should learn to work towards ideals which promote the universal brotherhood of man. For this reason, I renew my appeal to political leaders and the private sector to spare no efforts to ensure there is peace and unity globally. All this calls for a change of direction. To achieve this, we already pose the necessary cultural and theological, sorry, technological resources and social awareness. This change of direction will require, however, a more robust ethical framework capable of overcoming today's widespread and quietly growing culture of waste. At the origin of this throwaway culture is a gross lack of respect for human dignity. The promotion of ideologies with reductive understanding of the human person, a denial of the universality of fundamental human rights, and a craving for absolute power and control that is widespread in today's society. Let us name this <coughs> for what it is, an attack against humanity itself. It is, in fact, painful to see the number of fundamental human rights that are being violated <coughs> in our day with impunity the list of such violations is indeed lengthy and offers us a frightening picture of a humanity abused, wounded, deprived of dignity, freedom, and hope for the future. As part of this 
as part of this picture, religious believers continue to endure every kind of persecution, including genocide, because of their beliefs. Presently, Christians, Muslims, and people of other faiths become victims of this. How many of our brothers and sisters throughout the world are suffering, forced at times to flee from their ancestral lands, cut off from their richly, rich history and culture? We should also admit that humanitarian crises have become the status quo in which people's rights to life, liberty, and personal security are not protected. Indeed, as shown by conflicts worldwide, the use of explosive weapons, especially in populated areas, is having a dramatic long-term humanitarian impact. Conventional weapons are becoming less and less conventional and more and more weapons of mass destruction, wreaking havoc on cities, schools, hospitals, religious sites, infrastructures, and basic services needed by the population. What is more, great numbers of people are being forced to leave their homes. Refugees, migrants, and the internally displaced frequently find themselves abandoned in their countries of origin. Transit and destination deprived of any chance to better their situation in life and that of their families. Worse still, thousands are intercepted at sea and forcibly returned to detention camps where they meet with torture and abuse. Many of these become victims of human trafficking, sexual slavery, or forced labor, exploited in degrading jobs and denying the just wage. This is intolerable, yet internationally ignored by many. The numerous and significant international efforts to respond to these crises begin with great promise. Here I think of the two global compacts on refugees and on migration, yet many lack the necessary political support to prove successful. Others fail because individual states shake their responsibilities and commitments. All the same, the current crisis offers an opportunity for men and women of goodwill to help build a more fraternal and compassionate society. Brotherhood of the Cross and Star will continue to play its part. As a concrete sign of the Holy Father's commitment to care for our common home, I recently ratified the Brotherhood of the Cross and Star World Charity Day reach out to the needy, irrespective of their religion, tribe, or religious affiliation in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we must ask ourselves, if the principal threats to peace and security, poverty, epidemics, terrorism, and so many others can effectively be countered when the arms race including nuclear weapons, continues to squander precious resources that could better be used to benefit the integral development of peoples and protect the natural environment, while upholding every step to reform humanity to meet God's divine expectations, especially as it is manifest as this, at this time on earth in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is why at this critical juncture it is our duty to rethink the future of our common home and our common projects. A complex task lies before us, one that requires a frank and coherent dialogue. 
aimed at strengthening love, peace, and cooperation between states, the present crisis has further demonstrated the limits of our self-sufficiency, as well as our common vulnerability. It has forced us to think clearly about how we want to emerge from this, either better or worse. <coughs> Let me remind you once again to achieve all that you have presented today with your excellent team, that unity in diversity as a key for peace and sustainable development. It all hinges on peace. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> you must therefore acknowledge that God's sovereign government of the unified universal theocracy headed by the Christ of God and God himself who walks and rules now in the spirit and power of the ancient of days, Lida Olumba Olumba Obu, is here on earth among the nations. <coughs> he is the eternal one, for whom and by whom all things in the world were made and are preserved and governed. His kingdom is the universal kingdom of which Christ, together with the Father, and the host and the Holy Ghost reigns over the entire creation. The divine manifestation of the three in one God, even the ancient of days, leader Olumba Olumba Obu, fulfills the hopes and aspiration of the Gentiles and all oppressed people all over the world, seeing that he has come to consolidate true freedom, truth justice, equity, love, and peace in the world. The design of this discourse is to persuade and, if possible, to prevail with us at this end of time to a humble subjection and submission to the sovereign government of God, whose goal is to achieve the aforestated. The peace offered by the world is an empty promise and can only bring temporary comfort. God's peace is a permanent peace offered by the only one who can be trusted to keep his word and heal our sin. The world's peace is fleeting and changes with circumstances. Whether it was a world war involving dozens of nations, or a local skirmish involving tribes or clans, men have always been at war with one another, promoting world peace even though, he, even though we know human beings, no matter how hard they try, will never be able to bring it about. It's not biblical. As God's children, we are offered peace with God because we who once were far off, Ephesians 2.13, have been reconciled to God through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. His sacrifice addresses the root of the problem that the world ignores. By his sacrifice, he bridged the gap that sin inserted between us and God. But today, we are happy because having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Colossians 1.20 People everywhere search for peace. They sing songs about it and travel on pilgrimages to look for it. They even wage war to protect it. Many wealthy, famous, and powerful people will trade everything for just one moment of peace. What they often find, however, is the world's false peace, which is different from the peace offered by our Lord Jesus Christ. 
During times of prosperity, nations experience temporary peace. But when economies struggle, countries find themselves on the brink of civil war as well as, as, well as war with their neighbors. The peace of the world is a precarious thing. Conflict erupts when people are hungry. Peace disappears when circumstances turn ugly. Thus, says the Lord, concerning the prophets who lead my people astray, who cry, peace, when they have something to eat, but declare war against him, who puts nothing into their mouth. Micah 3, 5. The world's peace is built on the weak foundation of compromise. It ignores the root of the problem. When asked what's wrong with the world today, many will point to volatile stock markets, corrupt governments, disappearing rainforests, poor diets, lack of health care, broken families, overcrowded schools, and many more, which man has over the centuries tried to resolve using his limited knowledge and wisdom. Man tries to fix the symptoms of sin, but fails to see how the cause of the problem, which is the sin disease itself, can be rooted out unequivocally. This can only be healed by Christ not by money, regulation, or reform. Dealing with the symptoms of sin, but failing to diagnose the sin itself is not new. In the Old Testament, the false prophets treated sin lightly and proclaimed the problem solved when it was not. In contrast to the world's promise of peace, the peace which the divine author of peace, at whose divine instance we have gathered here today, is permanent and firmly grounded in his word. He does not ignore our sin. He heals it, making his peace a different kind of peace from what we find in the world in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. When circumstances are free of conflicts, we enjoy monetary peace, but when we face difficult relationships, health problems, and financial crisis, the momentary quiet, a disrupted, and chaos rules the day. The ancient of days, even the founder and leader of the Brotherhood of the Cross and Star offers peace in the midst of chaos. His peace does not change with the circumstances it is secure in spite of the circumstances. His peace is built on the sure foundation of his word. His word, however, can be trusted. He never contradicts himself or acts in any way that is out of character. He will never disappoint in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. God's peace is ours because Christ heals our root, our root of sin. In Christ, peace is offered with God because we, who once were far off, Ephesians 2.13, have been reconciled to God through his death and resur resurrection. The supreme sacrifice made by the Christ of God addressed for all time the root of the problem that the world ignores. By his supreme sacrifice, he abridged the gap that sin inserted between man and God. He took the punishment for the sins of the world. And in this dispensation, his divine manifestation brings eternal peace with God for all men. While we experience eternal peace by reconciling with God through Christ, we also receive the gift of his Holy Spirit. Because of him, we enjoy the blessing of peace in our daily lives. 
even when we find ourselves in the midst of turmoil. Ladies and gentlemen, mankind cannot begin to be all that God wants them to be until they grasp the value of interdependence. All of life, all of nature, all of history, and all the universe is based on the principle of interdependence. And the fact that everyone needs what someone else has, and everyone has what someone else needs. Only God is totally independent and self-sufficient in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. All else and everyone else is interdependent. Satan fell from his lofty heights because he thought of himself more highly than he ought. He thought he too could be independent and self-sufficient. It appears most people will say that we have come a long way in the past 2,000 years. We are far better educated. We are much more sophisticated. We know a whole lot more about the world we live in. The universe around us, the microscopic world within, in order to practice tolerance and live together in peace with one another, as good neighbors, humanity must first have to understand each other or appreciate each other's way of life and sociocultural identity. This is only possible if they are knowledgeable about distinct cultures, traditions, and value systems. Ignorance of each other's ways and lives has been a common cause throughout the history of mankind of suspicion and mistrust, through which their differences have all too often broken into wars. God's sovereign, God's sovereign, God's sovereign government is here among the nations. The eternal God for whom and by whom all things in the world were made and are preserved and governed is manifest today. We must recognize his presence and rulership in order to achieve peace and sustainable development in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We must recognize and identify with the divine essence of his mission, which is to consolidate on the supreme sacrifice of his dear son, Jesus Christ, who was since made peace by the blood of his cross to reconcile all things visible and invisible, inanimate and animate, even all things in heaven and on earth, in accepting their oneness in the universal brotherhood of spiritual and material creation, as well as the universal fatherhood of the ancient of days, at whose divine instance today's public lecture is being held, we must identify with his mission aimed at integrating all spiritual, social, religious, and social ideologies, philosophies, principles, and laws of man with the intrinsic ideology of love, which is the foundation of the universal brotherhood of man, ideology because the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ has since erased all laws and traditions meant to promote selfishness while it has endorsed peace and unity for the human family. Peace is the cornerstone of every nation's development at, as it comes along with unity positive thinking and collaboration for the common good of all. There is the need for citizens to decide on a set of united values that they will live by the nurture for the next generation, not on man-made values, but on divine values endorsed by the creator and author of peace and source of all development. 
in the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Peace nurtures the hope of forgiveness, business, and reunion with those with whom we share the planet. The peace of many people together is big. When we see ourselves as separate from our community and from nature, then violence and strife arise. Peace and security is an essential factor of human life. A peaceful and secure environment is critical to every society since it affects and enhances all aspects of economic and social development in a country and is a necessary sine qua non to the realization of human rights in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The pandemic has shown us that we cannot live without one another, or worse still, pitted against one another. The Olumba Olumba Obu public lectures is established to bring people of goodwill together to be a bridge between peoples. Let us make good use of this perpetual lec public lecture which has come to propagate the divine principles of selfish love, peace, and the unity of the human family, which is undeniably fundamental for the development of our world. This will enable us to transform the challenge that lies before us into an opportunity to build together once more our children of God. Children of God, let me leave you with the scripture that is recorded in Isaiah 54.10. For the mountains may depart, and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you, Amen. and my covenant of peace shall not be removed, Amen. says the Lord, who has compassion on you all. I thank our special invitees, the resource persons, the moderators, and everyone who have come to grace today's public lecture, which is one of the activities marking the universal celebration of the divine manifestation of the Dolumbo Olumbo Bu. You are all blessed. The chairman of the organizing team, our beloved erudite professor, Professor Mike Uzoma, who occupied the center stage in driving the process of ensuring that this program is successful. You are also blessed Amen. in the name of His Holiness Olumba Olumba Ubu. Father Olumba Olumba Ubu Amen. has used this exercise to establish lasting peace Amen. in your families, Amen. in your communities, Amen. in Nigeria, Amen. in all nations of the world. Amen. May his enduring peace, Amen. boundless grace, Amen. and blessings be upon the entire world. Even as I pray that the divine illumination of his Holy Spirit guide all men out of darkness and ignorance into the realization of the eternal brotherhood of man and the creation bound in the divine blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, Father. This is signed by His Holiness Olumba Olumba Ubu, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, leader, unified, universal, theocratic council, head of administration, brotherhood of the cross and star worldwide. We are one. We are one. We are one. One, one, one in the Lord. No more division among the white.
race No more division among the black race No more division among the children of God We are one, one forever We are one So we are one We are one No more division among the children of God. We are one. Hallelujah. We are one. Hallelujah. We are one. Come together. We are one. One, one, one in the Lord. No more division among the churches. No more division among the Muslims. No more division among the world I say we are one Hallelujah We are one Hallelujah We are one Come together We are one One in the Lord No more division among the churches No more division among religion no more division among the Muslim they say we are one, one forever. We are one, so forever. We are one, so we are one. We are one, 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 one in the Lord. No more division among the blacks. No more division among the white race. No more division among the children of God. We are one, one forever. We are one. Hallelujah. We are one. Come together. We are one. Please allow the Father to step out first. We are one. We are one. We are one. We are one. We are one, we are one, 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 one in the Lord. Hallelujah. Find knowledge, wisdom, and have positively influenced activities around the globe. Brotherhood of the Cross and Star invites the entire world to Nigeria as we mark the third edition of Leader Olumba Olumba Obo Public Lecture. Leaders around the world that have been influenced by the divine teachings and presence of the Godhead, great leader Olumba Olumba Obu, will gather to reflect on the divine teachings of the Holy Father with the theme, Unity in Diversity as Key to Peace and Sustainable Development. The date is Saturday, 18th December 2021. The venue is Monte Suits Conference Center, Calabar, Nigeria. Come and witness the truth about the living God. For more information, call plus 234-803-947-7296 and plus 234-803-770-2023. Bishop Trinita Obu, Chairman Media and Publicity Subcommittee and the Petra Christ Shepherd Honorable Ekuma Ngu, Secretary International Organizing Committee, announces, Thank you, Father.